Now, when you're writing content online, finding the best keywords is always ideal. Whether you're running your own blog post or you're writing on Medium and Vocal or Hub pages, finding what people want to read is imperative. That's because keywords will always be important. For instance, if you're writing a blog post about 1990 Dodge Daytona parts, you want to make sure that you're putting in parts for your 1990 Dodge Daytona. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to find the content who are looking for those parts. Two of the free tools I use in Google Chrome are Keywords Everywhere and Keyword Server. Now, both of these tools will have a similar process. I'm Mike with Rogers Anchor, and today we're going to take a look at Keywords Everywhere and Keyword Surfer to figure out which one is the best free system to use in Google Chrome. Now before we get started, we can hit the like button to help the channel out, and for more videos about blogging and freelance writing, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always hit me up on social media, on Twitter and Facebook, or use the contact form on RogerSanctuary.com's website. Okay, Keywords Everywhere and Keywords Surfer are both free extensions that you can install in Google Chrome. Now, although both of them do have similarities, there are quite a few distinct differences between the two. So let's take a look in Google Search and see what each one of these tools provides. As you can see, I have Keywords Surfer installed right here. And I have Keywords Everywhere, which is further down the list right there and they both have their lists of all the different related keywords and people also searched for and keyword surfers is right here and you can arrange it by pages you can say we can do 20 per page and give us a big long list and we can cycle through to see which ones are all available okay keyword surfer now keyword surfer will add the little flag here which is a estimated search volume for the United States if I want to change that I can come over here to the right and choose whatever country I'm in the number next to it is its estimated search volume it says zero even though Google Keyword Planner has a search volume between 10 and 100 so I'm not exactly sure where keywords uh, surfer is getting its information maybe it just doesn't have enough search to really trigger whatever algorithm it's using. Another issue that I've come across is on Keyword Surfer to show you the estimated monthly traffic for a domain in the United States of America from, well, text broker. It says 69,000. If you look at my website down here, it says 107. Now, I know for a fact that I get more than 107 visitors per day from the United States to my blog. So I'm not exactly sure what they're using to determine the uh, popularity. And the next little icon it gives you is the number of words for that article. Now, this would be extremely handy if it wasn't wrong. According to Keyword Surfer, I have 2,685 words on this blog post, but I know for a fact it's just over 1,400. In fact, I don't even think there's 2,600 words on the entire page itself. Now, I have noticed that some of the page counts does include uh, a comment section, but there's only like maybe, what, one or two comments on that post, so there's no way that I'm hitting 2,600 words. So it is kind of would be a kind of handy tool if it was correct, but I know for a fact that it's not. So we're gonna scroll down here in the correlation charts. It shows you the estimated traffic for all the for the keyword text broker tips, and we can select words. Now this would be an awesome tool to have if it was correct, because you know it show you which ones what blog posts are ranking for uh, the key phrase. So it would be kind of a handy tool if it was correct. I'm not really sure where it's getting its data from, but it does give you quite a few ideas for all the different keywords. Now, one thing I do like about Keyword Surfer is that you can select what keywords you want to keep. So let's say we want those four. Copies them to the clipboard, and we can look at what ones we have here. We can then remove the ones we don't want. Let's say we don't want that one. And then we can come up here and export as a CSV file, which is open. You can use, it's a spreadsheet, so you can use, uh, I use LibreOffice, you can use Excel, but it'll copy the keyword that it has and the number of monthly search, searches that it gets. But like I said, I'm not really sure where they're pulling the data from because it's not the same as what it is in Google Keyword Planner. Now to find long tail keywords for textbook or tips, this button here will actually open up um, keywords everywhere and it's the paid service. So if you want to pay for the service, you can find all kinds of keywords, uh, long tail keywords for text broker tips, but we're not going to do that because we're looking at the free version. So if we scroll down, we'll see related keywords. Now this here is keywords everywhere. Now it has the same thing. You can export to CSV, you can copy the whole list. You can't choose, pick and choose which ones you want. 
And if you pay for the service, you can load the metrics, which pretty much shows the same data as up here where it has the volume and keywords everywhere will actually show you the bid price from um, Google and uh, Keyword Planner. Now that's a deal that it used to have as free, but now you have to pay for it. So all you get is the list of keywords. These are the uh, related keywords to the phrase and then the also searched for, which both of these together is pretty handy because uh, it'll give you kind of uh, ideas for all kinds of blog posts later on. Personally, I'd rather use Keyword Surfer if it actually pulled the right information. Like the deal here is the number of exact keywords that are on that page. So the textbook or tips only shows once on Rife Sanctuary. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't looked, but I think that is correct. So if Keyword Surfer was to pull the correct information, this would be an exceptionally beneficial tool. Especially if you want to try to compete against somebody who's in a high ranking area, you can see how many words they wrote. But like I said, that is absolutely incorrect. Now one of the benefits of Keywords Everywhere is that it works pretty much anywhere there's a search field. So like if you wanted to do something on YouTube, you can take a look at different uh, key phrases that people use in YouTube. So you got the top channel is me with six videos. Um, gives you the maximum views. This is, these are all the insights for textbook or tips. Now all this information is vidIQ and that's a completely different plugin that I might review later on. But that's really the only thing you get um, with keywords everywhere showing the insights for textbook or tips in the search. But if I was to click on any one of these videos, let's say that I click on this one. So if we scroll down, keywords everywhere will actually show us all the keywords which it pulls off the tags of the video. So if you don't have vidIQ and you can't see the actual tags that are in it, then Keywords Everywhere will break it down. So you have textbook or content mails. These are all the different uh, tags that are used in this specific video. So there you have it. That was uh, Keywords Everywhere and Keyword Surfer on their free versions. Now, I would prefer Keyword Surfer if the information was correct, but I know it's not. I've done a bit of research on each one of the keywords I've tried using through it. And every time it's been completely different than what Google Keyword Planner uh, determines is for the volume. And you think with something like Google, they would know. And I'm really upset that it doesn't give a very accurate reading on how much, how many words are on each page, especially when it was off by like 1,200 words. Now, which one would I prefer? I kind of like both of them. Even though Keyword Surfer's data on some of the aspects is incorrect, it does give you a list of uh, viable key phrases you can use in an article. And sometimes Keyword Surfer comes across stuff that um, Keywords Everywhere doesn't. So using them both together gives you one long list of things that you can use on your blog. The hardest part is writing content go around it. So what's your favorite keyword tool? Leave in the comments down below. I have quite a few. Uh, keywords Everywhere and Keyword Surfer are always on my Google Chrome, but I also use, sometimes I'll use Ubersuggest when it works. I do like using Ahrefs, but that is a paid service and I don't think they have a free version. But the sheer amount of keyword tools that are on the internet, it's pretty easy to find something that you like. Now whichever which one works best for you is going to be completely up to personal preference. Some people will find value in Ubersuggest, while others love SEMrush. Just keep in mind that you don't have to stick to just one tool. But also keep in mind that if you sign up with a bunch of them, it gets expensive after a while. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button for more videos about blogging, freelance writing, WordPress, text broker, or anything else I cover, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. I think it's going to do it for me today. I'll see you next time.